uh, and what the um, X subscript C and Y subscript C components are, they are the coordinates of the, the tool point or the end of the robot within the base frame X0, uh, Y0. Uh, and our challenge is given where the end of the robot arm is located at XC, YC, uh, what angle do we need to set our joint one at in order to achieve that position? Uh, and this is a, a really trivial uh, case. Uh, we know that uh, we can use our inverse tan function uh, with the arguments XC and YC uh, and that will give us our theta one. Now you have to be a little careful because we're dealing in 3D space uh, and arms can move around and you've got to realize that in this case um, because we have a second uh, a second joint on our robot the, uh, the second part of the arm could actually be flipped um, over so uh, in this second diagram at the top right what I've shown is is if the joint one rotated around another 180 degrees you could still reach X C Y C by flipping the top joint 180 degrees over uh, and this is known as the flipped orientation and this actually means that theta 1 could also be a tan 2 x c y c plus 180 degrees or, or plus pi so there's two possible ways you could reach this point uh, with this fairly simple robot and this is something to keep aware of uh, as you're building your robots in your prac. Now the geometrical analysis uh, gets a little more complicated uh, even just with a single revolute joint uh, when your robot has a an offset in it. So this is a, a sort of an L-shaped robot arm. Uh, the L-shape is, is rigid, it doesn't bend to form different angles, uh, but it does make the math uh, a little bit more challenging because in this particular case uh, if you wanted to position your robot arm so that the, the tool point, the end of the robot arm, was sitting somewhere along the X0 axis, your angle of theta 1 required to do this wouldn't actually be 0 um, because the offset makes, makes life a bit more difficult uh, so you need a little bit more math to, to do this analysis. Uh, and the way to analyze this, and this is done in the textbook as well, uh, is to, to label a few different angles uh, showing uh, various parts of, of the uh, arm configuration uh, and use a bit of knowledge of trigonometry, um, some Pythagorean uh, theory uh, in order to get an expression for theta 1 and you can see that at the bottom of this slide uh, you can see it's a, a little more complicated um, but it can still be worked out through relatively simple math as long as you don't get too confused with reference frames and so forth. And you can do a very similar thing uh, for the opposite situ situation where the robot kink is arranged in the opposite orientation. Uh, this is known as the righty configuration. Uh, if you think of um, this as being looking down from on top on the robot, you can think of that as being your right arm as you, as you hold it out at an angle. Uh, and you get an expression for theta 1 at the bottom, uh, which is fairly similar to the previous expression for the lefty configuration. Of course there are, are many other types of robot arm configurations. Uh, another common one which you may even be encountering in your prac uh, is the double revolute joint. Uh, so two revolute joints uh, all in the same plane uh, and the the way to start off analyzing this system uh, is to first of all label, label all your links uh, label your angles uh, and then use the cosine law uh, which I've got a little uh, reminder about what that is at the bottom right from high school mathematics uh, and then uh, use this and you can get an expression uh, for theta 2 uh, which is given uh, in the middle of the slide uh, and you'll notice that there is a plus or minus in it uh, and this plus or minus corresponds to the fact that there are two solutions for what angle theta 2 could be at, uh, corresponding to an elbow up and an elbow down uh, situation. And this, this links in with the general theme with inverse kinematics of there often being more than one solution. Now of course you also need to find out what angle you need to set for theta 1 uh, and with a little more uh, trigonometry and geometry uh, you can get this expression uh, for theta 1. 
uh, which is which is shown here. Now, the final example for this lecture is to go to 3D. Now, this is where people who have excellent 3D visualization skills um, usually don't find it any more difficult, but people who struggle to think about things in 3D uh, can find it uh, quite a bit more difficult, so um, practice does make you a lot better. Uh, so in this example, we have a, a tool point uh, positioned at a point in space that is desirable for some reason, uh, and we'll label that location X, C, Y, C, Z, C. Uh, and remember, this is these are the coordinates relative to the base frame or relative to the world frame. Uh, and we want to work out what angle we need to set um, theta 1 and eventually theta 2 in 2 in order to achieve this, this location in space. So the first part, finding out what theta 1 is, is uh, quite similar to uh, what we did with the 2D examples. Uh, so we take the, the tool point uh, and we project down the x, c and y, c components uh, into the x, 0, y, 0 plane. Uh, and then we can, we can see uh, that the calculation for theta 1 is simply a tan 2 of x, c, y, c or pi plus a tan 2 x, c, y, c. The reason we have two answers is because joint 2 could be in the uh, normal configuration uh, like it's shown in this picture or we could be ro joint 1 could be rotated 180 degrees around and joint 2 could flip 180 degrees over to be in the uh, flipped over configuration. This is just like uh, the previous example earlier in the lecture. So important to note there are two possible answers in this case. But theta 1 isn't the only angle we need to work out. We also need to work out theta 2 um, and also L3 because L3 um, is, is a variable length. So what we can do is draw a cross-sectional plane. So this is a plane uh, in the x1, y1 plane. Uh, and what we've drawn is, is the arm with the joint variable 2, theta 2, and the joint variable L3. Uh, and we want to know how to define what theta 2 and L3 are, well, eventually in terms of x, c, y, c, z, c, uh, but we're just doing this halfway step in our analysis, uh, so we're just going to define them in terms of A and B. So this uh, diagram on the right shows this a little more clearly. I've, I've highlighted in red uh, the sort of cross-sectional, or not cross-sectional, the plane uh, that we're analyzing, the x1, y1 plane, and that's labeled in both the 3D full diagram and also in just a simplified diagram at the left. So first of all, if we define it, uh, what theta 2 is in terms of the a and b distances, well, that's, that's fairly simple. Theta 2 is just a tan 2 of a comma b. Um, L3, uh, we can define because it's just the hypotenuse of a right angled triangle, we can use uh, Pythagoras' theorem. Uh, so L3 is the square root of a squared plus uh, b squared. So we now have uh, two fairly simple expressions for theta 2 and L3, uh, but we have these in terms of these a and b parameters, and of course we need them to eventually be in terms of xc, yc, and zc. Uh, so what we need to do is relate um, A and B to X, C, Y, C, and Z, C. So if we look at our, our simple plane section, uh, the value A is just the component of the L3 length that is in the X0, Y0 plane. Uh, so we can actually express the square of it as um, a squared equals uh, xc squared plus yc squared. Uh, for b, well b is the distance downwards in the, in the sort of uh, world frame from the x1 axis. Uh, but we also have to take into account the offset of 3 meters uh, between joint 1 and joint 2. So B is just 3 minus ZC. You've got to be a little bit careful here because if you look at this, um, the simple X1, Y1 diagram at the bottom of this slide, you've got to remember that that's um, sort of flipped around from where X1 and Y1 actually sit 
in the in the world frame in the top right diagram so once we know uh, what a and b is well we have a to in, expressed in terms of a squared uh, we can substitute in to uh, l3 uh, and l3 we know is the square root of a squared plus b squared and theta 2 uh, we can then sub in equals a tan 2 of plus or minus uh, the square root of xc squared plus yc squared comma 3 minus zc. Uh, we probably should have been putting the plus minuses in a bit earlier, uh, but it, as we've got it here, it indicates that there's two possible answers for theta 2. Uh, so you'll note that we've got two possible answers for theta 2 and two possible answers for theta 1. And if you look at the diagram, uh, you can see that uh, when uh, theta 2 um, has, when you look at the positive root when you're calculating for theta 2, uh, this goes with the um, theta 1 equals a tan 2 uh, solution for theta 1. Uh, when you look at the, the negative root for the solution to theta 2, uh, this goes with the theta 1 equals pi plus a tan 2 xcyc solution. Uh, so you can see that the, the two solutions for theta 1 and the two solutions for theta 2 um, are paired depending on whether the robot uh, joint 2 is in a, a normal configuration or in a flipped over configuration. Okay, so that's uh, it for this lecture. Uh, the key hints, I guess, would be to uh, draw, draw, and draw uh, diagrams. Uh, get really good at drawing both the 3D original diagrams and also the, the 2D simplified diagrams. Uh, this will help you a lot. Uh, practice your naming rules, so work out how to quickly name the axes and, and orientate them in order to satisfy the dh parameter or the dh rules. Uh, revise some of your trigonometry, so things like the cosine rule uh, are good to revise because they'll help you um, be able to quickly geometrically analyze some of these inverse kinematic solutions. And lastly, um, if you get a chance, um, try out some of the, the, the solutions you get. So see whether these inverse kinematics uh, make sense for a particular set of values. Um, draw the arm uh, in a particular configuration, do the calculations and, and see if they match up.